somos los representantes de Centroamérica. For those of you that don't speak Spanish, that just means good evening. We're the representatives of Central America. This is Larry, Dennis, Ariel, Michelle, Francis, David, and Manny in the back. I'm George. Um, our overall, our overall countries covered here that we're going to be covering are Nicaragua, Mexico, and Honduras. The uh, aspect we chose to focus on are the different the differences that the tourists see and the the good that they want to come to visit, as opposed to what everybody sees in the everyday life of Nicaragua living there or Central all of Central America living there every day. I'm going to pass it off to you. So what we try to do is recreate part of the tourism and uh, we are very known for our, our beaches and everything where people can go, relax, have a good time and um, what we did here is we recreated part of the surfing. There's a lot of surfing in Mexico and Nicaragua, which I didn't know Nicaragua was surfing. Um, but you know, I learned that from my from my classmates, and we tried to recreate the like you know the the waves and everything. We we have also um, a lot of rainforests. We have one of the biggest rainforests in Central America, which is La Reserva del Rio Plátano in Honduras. And uh, if you walk to the middle, you will see that we try to recreate that forest, and you know, there's also rivers and everything in that. <coughs> Hi, my name is Ariel. I'm also her classmate. And remember, um, I'm still talking about tourism. We have actually one of the best at Central America and Mexico. Um, nature and, as she said, tropical forest and rainforest. Um, Nicaragua is really famous for having a large lakes, volcanoes, active volcanoes. Um, there's places you can actually go and look over and see the lava flowing. Um, Nicaragua has one of the few saltwater, freshwater sharks, aside from in the beach, they, they still have one of the sea turtles, one of the few places that have um, the eggs, where they lay the eggs, the nesting area. Um, um, as she said, um, it's really famous for surfing, especially towards the Atlantic Coast. Um, I mean, Pacific Coast, sorry. The Atlantic Coast is more famous for um, having um, snorkeling, um, seeing Greece. Um, it was the culture there. A lot of people, you might be amazed, they speak English because of the slave trade and the British colonies. Um, and now we're going to talk about Mexico. Good evening, I'm Dennis. Um, and basically in, uh, in Mexico, in, in its historical um, cultural heritage, well-known things for it, of course, um, the um, Mayan Aztec as decent as here. Um, what we have here is a recreation of the uh, Chichen Itza uh, site, which is located uh, originally, the original site is in uh, Yucatan, uh, Mexico. Um, and it's basically, uh, you know, it's a, it was a major regional center for the, um, the Mayans of here in the lowland uh, area during that time period. Um, it's, the site itself is usually centered on the temple, which is what we've got recreated here. Um, and like uh, most uh, pyramid structures, think basically it's a place of worship. Um, one, we are reaching up to the heavens and God. Uh, it's their pyramid, and the top of the pyramid is the temple. And the way that they're built um, during the, the uh, spring equinox, um, you can basically see um, the way that the, not here in our station, but in the original site, the the way that the shadows are cast and the way that the sun hits the pyramids creates the illusion at the table sport of a serpentine descending um, down the steps. Um, uh, the the uh, feathered serpentine, uh, which is what's uh, represented there as one of the gods of the uh, Mayan uh, culture. Um, all right. And one thing I want to show here is also the um, evidence of the, at the site uh, suggests that when it was destroyed, it, when it was a bang, it was pretty much, it was not 
a very peaceful when he fell apart. There was no violent destruction, no evidence of fire. Um, and basically, um, those who have torched solar things would present that and just the Basically, you could say the whole place more or less uh, burnt down. And then this is what the first person investigated. Um, I'm just going to pass this on there. There's more to talk about as far as the uh, cultural representations for uh, the that we found in Mexico and in my uh, culture. By the way, if it's useful for, for instance, your avatar is sleeping, you could have been at your terminal with the microphone and activate your avatar. You don't have to be standing here. We can hear you. Anywhere in the room as long as you have a technical problem. Go move your avatar. <laughs> it looked like an interesting costume, so it's not. Alright, good evening everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you for being here. Thank you for uh this guest, you know. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And um, I'll follow up on uh on Dennis. Basically, uh, I'll be talking about the Maya culture a little bit. Uh, I had the opportunity to live in the Yucatan Peninsula. I actually married in Yucatan for about eight years. So I've been to these places. I was able to visit that uh, pyramid and uh, tell you the truth. Uh, spring comes, egg comes, you know, the, you can see the shadows you know, real well and the surf, you know, it seems like you come down. You know, millions and millions of people, you know, go to that event. And it's pretty cool. So if you guys ever get a chance, you know, Please don't make it to the side. Hold the microphone close. Okay. Uh, also, a little bit more, uh, I'm going to talk about, you know, uh, the, the Mayas. Uh, they were the first people, you know, to develop a real accurate, you know, calendar. And uh, they also have a, you know, to prove it, uh, they have a sign. Is this character uh, behind you, Mayan? <coughs> this one, he is, uh, you know, yes. dressed up in some of uh, Yes, that's uh, my yeah, aspect. My yeah. warrior outfit. Yes. Anyway, um, I don't have it on this slide, but uh, they do have this calendar you know, that they came up with. Uh, one of the calendars that they use the most is called the Zolkin. The guy behind you is a guy who's been developed by a calendar. I'm going to be telling Did they wear glasses back then? <laughs> the fire fused the sand that was on his face. Um, the fire just fused the sand that was on his face into glass and uh, the illusion that he got there. <laughs> anyway, let me get back to the, the other calendars. Uh, they did develop one of the most accurate calendars. Uh, the one that they used the most is called the, the Sol Kim, which, uh, you know, it has 260 days and that's the one they used to uh, the, you know, the religious events, you know, to the nations and sacrifices. Uh, basically, uh, this calendar, you know, comprises uh, 20 periods of 13 days, you know, making a total of 260 days. They also had another calendar, which is called the HAB, H-A-A-B, and that, you know, that comes, to, you know, to our most accurate, you know, representation of the calendar nowadays, that, uh, that has 360 days, and it comprises 18 months, you know, of 20 days each. This is that calendar, and uh, basically uh, at the same slide of Chichen Itza, we don't have a picture here right now, okay? uh, but they have also a place called uh, a Caracol, which is an observatory you know, that they developed. It's set up in a way that pretty much like all the observatories are, you know, you know now it's a brown slide. And uh, the way they used it is that uh, inside, you know, depending on the sun, you know, you know it casts the shadows. They use that, you know, to predict events, seasons, and also uh, right outside of the temple, they have some uh, cups, you know, that hold the uh, water. So basically, what they do with this is uh, they see the, the reflection on the stars, you know, at night, and the way uh, they uh, they use it, you know, to develop their calendar, you know, the reflection. Uh, Nicaragua is known as the land of lakes and volcanoes. 